Hello everyone, this is Siddhant Ray here. This is part 7 of our series of basics of Java programming. We'll be covering two essential topics, error handling using exceptions and file input output. These concepts are critical for writing robust programs that can handle unexpected situations and for working with data stored in files. Let's begin. In programming, errors are inevitable. However, by handling errors properly, we can prevent our programs from crashing and instead handle those errors gracefully. In Java, we use exceptions to handle errors. Exceptions are objects that represent an error that has occurred in your program. You can catch and handle exceptions using a try-catch block. Let's look at a simple example of error handling using a try-catch block. In this example, we attempt to divide a number by zero, which will throw an arithmetic exception. Try int result 10 upon zero. System.out.println result catch arithmetic exception e. System.out.println error division by zero. In this code, the try block contains the code that may throw an exception. When an exception occurs, the program immediately jumps to the catch block where the error is handled. In this case, we catch the arithmetic exception and print an error message instead of allowing the program to crash. Sometimes we may want to handle different types of exceptions differently. Java allows us to have multiple catch blocks, each designed to handle a specific type of exceptions. Let's see how that works. Try int numbers 1, 2, 3. System.out.println numbers 3. Catch array index out of bounds exception e. System.out.println error array index out of bounds. Catch arithmetic exception e. System.out.println error arithmetic issue. In this example, we attempt to access an invalid index of an array. This throws an array index out of bounds exception, which we catch and handle. If an arithmetic error occurred, the arithmetic exception block would handle it instead. Now let's talk about file input and output. File IO allows us to read from and write to files, enabling us to store data permanently and retrieve it when needed. In Java, we use clauses like file reader and file writer for reading and writing text files. Let's look at a basic example of writing to a file using file writer. This example writes a message to a text file called output.txt. Try file writer writer equals new file writer output.txt. Writer.write hello world. Writer.close system.out.println file written successfully. Catch io exception e. System.out.println error could not write to file. In this code, we create a file writer object to write to a file named output.txt. The write method writes the string to the file and the close method closes the file to ensure that the data is saved. If an error occurs, such as the file not being writable, an IO exception is caught and handled. Now let's see how we can read data from a file using file reader. This example reads the contents of output.txt and prints them to the console. Try file reader reader equals new file reader output.txt. In character, while character equals reader.read not equal to minus one, system.out.print char character, reader.close, catch io exception e, system.out.print ln, error could not read from the file. In this example, we create a file reader object to read from output.txt. The read method reads one character at a time and we print each character until we reach the end of the file, which is represented by minus one. As before, we handle any errors using a try catch block. Let's combine what we've learned about exceptions and file IO. In this example, we log any exceptions that occur to a file called errorlog.txt. This is a common practice in real world applications to help developers track issues. In this code, we attempt to divide by zero, which throws an arithmetic exception. Instead of printing the error to the console, we log it to a file using file writer. The true argument ensures that we append the error to the file instead of overwriting it. That's all for part 7 of our Java series. Today, we covered error handling with exceptions and explored file input output operations. These are essential tools for building robust programs that can gracefully handle unexpected situations and work with external data. In the next part, we'll delve deeper into working with files and introduce more advanced topics like serialization and streams. Thanks for watching. See you soon everyone. Bye for now.